Hello everyone, today we're here with the big splash. It is Ark Nova Marine Worlds. I'm going to cover all of the bits of this expansion, tell you why they're good and, well, if they make this a necessary expansion for you to get. And just know that I did get this at sort of a reviewer discount. Marine Worlds is the name, so let's start off with marine life, and that is the water slash sea animals that are going to be sort of added into the game, shuffled into the main deck. Now they come with two main things about them that makes them stand out. Some of them have got reef abilities. These are almost like engine building-y things that the animals previously didn't have. All right, you had uh, maybe petting zoo animals where the more petting zoo animals you got, the more you got from them. But these reef abilities are small abilities on their own, but every time you do a subsequent animal with a reef ability, they all trigger again. And that does feel cool if that's the strategy you're going for because you can trigger a number of things. They are limited by the amount you can play of those animals because you've only got the aquariums to fill up. So it's not a never ending sort of amount you can trigger, but that's a cool thing. The second thing are the new wave icons. These are going to stop you worrying about that huge deck getting huger and you never getting through it because it really does seem to sort of help just cycle through that deck a little bit. Effectively, when a, uh, one of those wave icons comes out, apart from during initial setup, an extra card is washed off the end of the market and put in the discard pile. Now, this can mean that there's a card in that market that's just at the end that you really wanted has just been washed out of the market, but it certainly does stop people being able to say that that market doesn't flow that little bit more despite there being more cards in the deck. So for the sea animals part they've got some cool abilities they cycle that deck so even though it's got bigger it doesn't feel like it and to be honest once they've been shuffled in they really do feel like they've been there all the time so this is for the expansion much more of the same with a few extra cool bits definitely a good part of the expansion. Next up is the new universities, which adds a new middle board because effectively your old one doesn't have a place on it for the fourth university. Now, four universities means you have a potential choice on your hands. You're still only able to get three universities over the course of the game. So do you go for one of these new ones, the original three? What sort of combination do you go for? And I like that choice. You had that with the partner zoos where, well, I've got four slots, so I'm not going to be able to get one of each. And now you've got it with the universities. I also like that by taking one of those, you're getting a tag that's potentially helping you for one of those conservation projects. It's also going to get you a card of that tag type. So say you take the new university, you put that off to the side, you choose, if it's still available, the new uh, octopus symbol, the sea animal symbol, and you search through the deck until you find a card with that symbol on it. And that's a nice way, again, to guarantee yourself one of those types of cards, which can be very useful con for conservation side of things, but also means you do get a card that's going to be hopefully useful to you. So I really like that, and I like the fact four universities gives you a choice that wasn't there before. So, yeah, that's a cool addition as well. What most people are going to get excited about for this expansion, however, are the new action cards. They completely replace the original action cards and then add some uh, bits on the top. Now, why do they do that? Well, they've changed the wording on some of the cards. They've not changed the, the basic ones. They've just sort of changed the wording because on some of the extra ones that you're going to draft at the beginning of the game, they add stuff. Now, if you play with the non starter maps the sort of everyone has a unique map these are a no-brainer to be adding into your Ark Nova game and they're just cool little bonuses even in that first play when you're not a hundred percent sure how all the new stuff's gonna add together and oh is this ability better than that one it doesn't matter they're all little bonuses like the map bonuses that you've you're hopefully gonna trigger throughout the game they're little bonuses that are going to help you 
Now, whether you can exploit them so they help you a lot, that is up to you and, well, playing the game. I also like with these action cards that not all of them are definite upgrades. Some of them, it's like, okay, like a normal card, if I upgrade that, this is just a better version of it. So, you know, maybe you can build on spaces that are rock and water or whatever. Now, what happens about some of them, though, is when you upgrade it, the power changes. So one we saw in a game that we played was uh, someone could use it to effectively unlock an association worker. I always call mine Steve. Let me know in the comment section below what you call your association workers, though. One side of their card allowed them to unlock association workers. When they flipped it over, it no longer gave them that ability, but it gave them a different one. So their choice was, when do I take this option? Do I take it super late, so I've got all of my dudes unlocked? Or do I take it part way through the game? Because you're going to get other ways to unlock association workers and stuff. I found, certainly in my first game, I underutilised the abilities on my cards, but I still felt like they'd given me, periodically, little bonuses that I could do that no one else can. And, well, if you're enjoying Ark Nova past your first game, with the unique map powers, unique powers on your action cards, well, it just makes sense. And I do like the very quick little draft at the beginning of the game, because it means you can see what maybe other people are getting. You can hold on to something that you think is going to be good, but then go, ah, actually, ooh, I've got three to choose from, and you keep two for the game. They are probably the standout part of this expansion for many, and they just feel good. They're always going to be in my game. I think even with brand new players, because even if they don't know if they're drafting something good or great, they're still going to get a benefit from it and they feel cool when you use your ability that no one else can do. And I'd add to that that if you're playing Ark Nova, it's a big enough game that if you're sort of that's your level, there's very little, there's no real extra difficulty added by those action cards. It's just like little extras bonuses for you as a player so it doesn't make it harder so a brand new player could use them in the expansion there are 119 cards however only 81 of them are actually brand new most of those are animals but there are some also some new scoring cards that I'd definitely like to mention. If you played Ark Nova a few times you draw the two and you're like right this is probably the one that's going to be done because this one's quite hard or you can often be like right small animals I could work towards that but from my starting hand and the market and everything it could be difficult because there aren't any just adding a few more variations of different things that you can try and do for your those final scoring cards absolutely love it they're always going to be shuffled in regardless if, if it's a new person playing because they're just different scorings now, I did kind of mention it there. You are getting 38 replacement cards. It's a bit of a pain point sort of set up for the very first game with the expansion. Most of it is tweaking iconography. It didn't necessarily need to be done, but after that first one-time pain, well, you're not going to notice it. And that's something for you to be aware of. It could be a negative for you that if you do think, I want to unshuffle my marine worlds and then put the original cards back in and then flip flap between the two, that those replacements, that's a bit annoying, to be honest. However, I think most people are just going to shuffle it in. And after that one time pain, you can effectively keep them in a special bag in the box, those replaced cards. And it does make all the iconography across sort of the base game with replacements and the new stuff from the expansion look the same. And I like that. We've also got some new tiles in the shapes of aquariums. Now, as I alluded to when I talked about the different animals that are going to go into them, you do only have access to so many of them. Unlike the normal enclosures, you can just build any as many as you want in any sort of the sizes as you can afford, well, you can only build one five and one two aquarium. And these do fill up very similar ways to the reptile houses 
um, and the Avery's from before, so you kind of need to really pick which of the animals you're going to be putting in them. There is also one new, uh, I think it's um, a sponsor card that has a special extra two, and that's quite a nice little touch. That feels like a cool card to get because if there's loads of those new sort of needing an aquarium cards, well, you've only got a limited amount. It does mean that you're never going to just sort of go down that route. You're not going to make a water park. You're not going to make just an, a massive aquarium and that's it. You've got to make it a zoo still. So it balances it from that side of things. And I think they've also used it to mean you can never get too many of them. Um, a bit like too many reptiles. You can't benefit from a reptile house just flooding loads of lizards in. You can't flood loads of fish in because of that balance. So I like that. And the new tiles, they just sort of feel exactly at home. And you can build them from the very get-go. You don't need to have upgraded your, uh, your build card. And that's one of the things the new cards, the new build, even just the basic version, does just say on them that you can build aquariums. So that's a nice thing that they've updated that. And that's one reason why they had to have the replacement cards. And last but not least, there are wooden components in the box featuring penguins. Yes, the best animal or joint best animal with hippos has been immortalized in Ark Nova as meeples. And what more can you possibly want? Well, you've got three other types of meeples, um, animal meeples for the different players. So that's absolutely fine. And they just replace the cubes that sit down the side of your board for those unlocks. They're a nice touch, but they're really not necessary. In my opinion, this is the sort of thing that would be an Etsy upgrade or a 3D printer sort of thing that you no longer need to do. Alongside them, there's also replacements for the three different tracks. Well, you've now got one that looks like a university hat for the reputation track. You've got a ticket stub for that track sort of thing. They're nice. But like I say, it's the sort of thing that I would expect if you really wanted that thing, you've already 3D printed it. Or maybe you've gone on Etsy and bought one on that sort of marketplace. They're nice that they're in there, but they're kind of not needed. <laughs> At the same time, I'm never not going to use them. They're nice, but they didn't need to be part of this expansion. It would have been maybe better if they were a separate thing that people could have picked up or not picked up if they wanted. A couple of other points that don't really fit into any of these bubbles. Now, first of all, there's no new maps. Yeah, we got that map pack and originally it sounded like there was going to be some maps in this. And then they said, no, we've got a map pack, then this expansion. But it feels like a bit of a lost sort of opportunity just to give us some more maps for Ark Nova. Yeah, they're probably going to do a map pack too. But that just feels like they're going out of their way to sort of string bits and pieces along and they could have thrown a few maps into this and everyone would have just been that bit happier. A couple more bits of sort of card in the box. I don't know quite sure why they didn't do that, but I'm sure they'll make some more money from that down the line. Also, it's important to note, if you have the base game, it's a fairly tight fit for all of the components back in the box, but you can definitely get all of the bits from the expansion box into the base game without any sort of box lift. Although, be careful when you put them back in that you're doing it nice and level, otherwise the lid doesn't fit. But that was kind of normal with Ark Nova anyway, so as long as you pack it in a fairly, not entirely Tetris way, you can get all of the expansion stuff nice and easily into the base game box. So overall, there was a lot of this expansion that I love, and I think I'm going to just keep it in there. I don't think a brand new player will notice some of the things. Would they notice if there was the marine life or not the marine life? Probably not. Would they notice that there's those special upgraded cards uh, that you're going to have to draft? Yeah, that will add a bit to sort of a new player's experience, but if you're already planning on playing Ark Nova, doesn't really push it up that much. And they're all benefits, so you might not get the best benefits from it, but you're still gonna get a benefit. And if you're playing with the unique maps, well, you might as well be using the unique powers from those action cards, because they're just cool. 
Now, like I've said, the wooden components, I don't think they needed to be in this, but they are nice. I'm very glad I've got them. I will be using them every time I play Ark Nova, but it feels like you've got sort of bits that add to the experience and then some bits that upgrade the experience in the same expansion. Not everyone's going to like that, but hopefully this has helped you find out the, a bit about sort of the different elements that the expansion adds, what I think of them. Some are necessary, well not necessary, some are good upgrades, some are unnecessary but good upgrades. And in general, I've been really happy with this one. It's exactly what I wanted from Marine Worlds. It's some new animals, some cool action cards, more of the same. It feels just like it's still Ark Nova. It's not changed the game, but in this case, that's exactly what I wanted from the expansion. And I'm very, very happy with it. Let me know in the comments section below if you've played with Marine Worlds. What did you think of it? Did it change the game that much for you? It certainly didn't feel like it to me, despite me enjoying the new additions. And well, until next time, thanks for watching.